Hello, everyone, and welcome to the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia. You can find me on Ravelry as Liddy Knits 2 and on Instagram as Read Knit Run. Today is Thursday, April 18th of 2019, and this is episode 59. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for dropping in. I'm so glad that you found this channel. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and for subscribing. So to start off this podcast, I have an announcement, and that is about the D Hard House Sock Knit Along of 2019. And the D Hard House Sock Knit Along has officially ended, and I have prize winners to announce. So just to wrap up the cowl itself, we knit a pair of socks with some striping details. I have a pattern for this available on Ravelry called the D Hard House Sock Cal 2019, which is free to download. There are also tutorial videos right here on YouTube, taking you through every step it takes to knit this pair of socks. So even if you're a beginner sock knitter, you should be able to follow along. So this cow was not a finish to be eligible for prizes kind of knit along. It was a particip participation based knit along, which was super fun. So I chose three random winners from the Ravelry thread and one random winner from Instagram. So you had to post in the Ravelry group, D Hard House podcast group, in the D Hard House Sock Cal thread. And all you had to do was post progress photos or talk about your knitting or ask questions. Basically just participate and engage in conversation and encouraging each other. Uh, and then you could also post pictures over on Instagram using the hashtag DHSockCal2019. So for the winners from Ravelry, our three winners are, so first of all, they're based on what number of posts you have. And I did also engage in the conversation. So if a random number was chosen to be my post, I just drew another number and I used random.org. So we had 64 posts total. So the winners are number two, La Jolla Girl, number 51, Squirrel 21, and number 16, Jazzy Java. So congratulations, winners. Here's what you need to do to claim your prize. Please send me a private message on Ravelry letting me know which of my sock designs you would like to be gifted. So D Hard House Designs on Ravelry is my little pattern shop. I have some shawl patterns, sock patterns, and I think a hat pattern. Uh, but because this was a sock knit along, you are eligible for a sock pattern of your choice. So just send me a little message letting me know which pattern you would like to be gifted. And for our one Instagram winner, same idea, you have also won a sock pattern. So our winner over on Instagram is Ida Knits. So Ida Knits, congratulations. So since you have won via Instagram, then either send me a private message on Instagram or on Ravelry. Again, letting me know which of my sock patterns you would like to be gifted. So I have to say, I really like hosting participation-based knit-alongs because there's no pressure. <laughs> it's not about finishing. I mean, obviously you want to finish, but you don't have to finish to be eligible for a prize, which I think is super fun. And it makes it more enjoyable for those of us who have a lot of stress in our lives. <laughs> so again, thank you to everyone who participated. It was so nice to see uh, your yarn choices and some of the modifications you made to the pattern. Uh, it was really cute and clever. So again, thank you. It was a lot of fun. So let's talk about the knitting. <laughs> I have zero finished objects to show this week. Um, I got close to finishing uh, something, but 
you'll see why I didn't actually finish here in a second. <laughs> So I have some works in progress and the first work in progress I'm going to show you is a pair of socks. So I'm knitting a pair of socks out of some Desert Vista Dye Works yarn and this is in the Dry Bones, Dry Bones Gray colorway which is a nice tonal gray with some pink and green speckles which is actually really pretty. And I'm, you would think I'm on the second sock because I've already finished one, except that this sock doesn't fit. Yeah. So I usually knit my socks on a US size one needle with 60 stitches for myself. I decided that I wanted to use a US size zero to get a tighter fabric. However, I kept it at 60 stitches. And I should have done 64. So this sock does not fit and needs to be torn out, which really bites. I have already weaved in the ends. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't fit. It just barely goes onto my foot. But even then, the thing is so tight around my ankle with this ribbing, there is no way. So I actually need to tear out this sock. This is what I was knitting while I was at DFW Fiberfest, hanging out with my friends. And obviously when I cast this on, I wasn't paying attention. And the whole way through, I was distracted because I was having fun and socializing. So I never picked up on the fact that I should have had more stitches. Yeah, so um, I'm going to rip this out and reuse the yarn and knit another sock with 64 stitches. So it happens, whatever. So this is not the second sock. This is the first sock. So I'm currently on the toe decreases. So I'm almost finished with this. Uh, but yes, it's another shorty sock. I did um, two by two ribbing instead of one by one ribbing. And the reason I did that was so that if and when I take this sock off the sock blotter, sock blocker, that I do not confuse these two socks. So I decided to do two by two ribbing. Besides, I did... Um, two by two ribbing on the other shorty socks that I knit myself a couple years ago. So I already know I like it, so I just went ahead and did that. So two by two ribbing, it's a really short uh, ankle sock, uh, short row heel, just plain stockinette. This has been my uh, treadmill knitting that I knit while I'm walking on the treadmill. So our treadmill is set up right in front of a television in one of the bedrooms in this house. And so I just watch TV while walking on the treadmill and knitting a sock. So it's multitasking to the extreme. <laughs> anyway, I'm in the toe decreases right now. So this should be finished and I should be able to cast on the proper second sock. So my next work in progress to talk about is a shawl that I am designing and I have put a little bit more progress on this since last time. I believe last episode, episode 58, I was just starting this um, solid section right here. So I've knit all of this since then. So it is a triangle shawl where the rows do increase a little bit as we go so the rows are getting quite long now but I still have uh, a lot of yarn to go through and the plan is to use all of the yarn so I'm using two col two colors of yarn two balls and the colors are the solid purple is Cascade Heritage and the color number is 5633 and the speckle, this light speckle color, is Lucky 13 Fibers. And the color is called 
purple gray speckled yep so it is definitely a purpley gray shawl and I love it and I can't wait to finish it and wear it so um yes I just do a little bit here and there as I have time so I do have still quite a bit of yarn left like I said the plan is to use as much of these two as possible um <coughs> I don't really want to have leftovers so uh, and I really like big shawls so if I can use both of these skeins up that would be amazing and then last but not least is my brick sweater and brick is a pattern by Claire Lee and it is free on Ravelry. <laughs> it's a top-down raglan sweater. It is a worsted weight sweater pattern and I am really enjoying this. So last time I showed you guys that I had finished the body of the sweater. Yep. And now I have finished one sleeve and I just did the tubular bind off today, this morning, <laughs> on this sleeve. So now I'm ready to pick up and knit the other sleeve. So I will say right here, I did, so I've made a couple modifications to this pattern so far. The first thing that I modified was that I knit the sweater longer than what the pattern called for. Now I am knitting this out of 100% acrylic yarn. So when I wash and block this, it's not really going to grow and expand as much as knitting this out of wool. So I did knit it a bit longer than in the pattern, but it hits me at a really nice place on my body. So I like it. I did do the four inches of ribbing at the bottom, bottom like she called for. Uh, and then another change I made was that I did a tubular bind off instead of binding off in pattern. And I will link in the show notes the tutorial video that I found and followed for the tubular bind off. Uh, it is a very well made tutorial video. Um, she zooms in so you can see what's going on on the needles and explains it very well. So I will make sure to link that in the show notes and show notes can be found in the D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry. So yes, it's just a really cool bind off method. It is not the stretchiest. Okay. So I will say that when I was executing the tubular bind off, I made sure to keep tugging on the edge so that it wouldn't be super scrunched up and tight when I was finished. Uh, so I kept t uh, stretching this out because I know I want this to be somewhat stretchy <laughs> to go over my body and hug my curves and do all of that very flattering stuff. So I did the same bind off on the end of the sleeve and I will do the same bind off around the neck as well. So it's all consistent. So again, I just kept tugging on the um, edge here as I was binding off to make sure it wasn't too tight. And you can see I still need to weave in ends and things. And what I like to do with, um, with sleeves is mark my decreases with stitch markers um, so that I can just copy them onto the second sleeve. And I'm using my new rose gold light bulb stitch markers from Stunning String Studio. And I did not realize, I'm not going to take this off, but these light bulb stitch markers, the end of it is very pointy and sharp, just like a safety pin. I did not know that. So as I was putting, it on, putting these stitch markers on here, I was trying to be very careful not to split the yarn, not to put it through the strand, but under the strand. Um, so I did not realize that. I kind of like that it's sharp like a 
safety pin. I just did not realize that when I purchased them. I had a completely different expectation. I thought they were going to be very dull on the end. So <laughs> much to my surprise, they're not. So I don't know if that's standard, but I did not know that. Anyway, yeah, I uh, did not follow the pattern on the sleeve, to be honest. I did my own thing with the decreases. I believe the pattern for the size that I'm knitting, I'm knitting a size large. Um, and I'm using the same needle size as what the pattern calls for, which is a size US size 6 for the body. And then to go down a needle size on the ribbing, so US size 5. But I believe in the pattern, if I remember correctly, she says to knit 13 rounds and do a decrease. 13 rounds and do a decrease so many times. And that was just going to create a baggier sleeve on my arms than what I wanted. Again, I'm knitting this out of acrylic yarn, not wool. So this fabric has different properties than the wool fabric. So... So I did my own thing uh, with the decreases, and I will make a note of that on my Ravelry page. I believe what I did was I knit um, every eight rounds, every ninth round, it was eight, eight rounds in between, knit eight rounds, then do a decrease, knit eight rounds, do a decrease. And then when it got uh, the sleeve got past my elbow, I started doing the decreases more frequently because your arm, my arm specifically, tapers off more frequently at this point. So then I started um, doing knit five rounds, do a decrease, knit five rounds, do a decrease, uh, until, I put it over here this time, uh, and then I just did what, a couple more rounds of plain stockinette before starting the ribbing. So, um, so you can see in the sleeve, you can kind of tell that it's going at this angle for a little while and then it changes to go at this angle. But that's what I like on my sleeves. So I've tried it on several times. I kept trying it on as I was knitting the sleeve to make sure that it was fitting just how I wanted it to. And it's beautiful. Now, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, do, do I want to knit the other sleeve while this sleeve is still fresh in my mind, or do I want to go ahead and knit the collar? Because um, this collar, this, this neck opening here is so wide, and while I was putting it on to try on my sleeve, the weight kept pulling this, and I'm telling you guys, this neck opening can fit over my shoulder. I mean, look at this. It can fit over my shoulders. <laughs> so it was kind of hard to accurately judge the length of this sleeve since my neckline kept moving. So I don't know. I think, I think I'll knit the other sleeve while this is fresh in my head and then come back and do the collar last, honestly. I think that's what I'll do. But uh, yes, this definitely needs to be worked on because this neck opening needs more structure to it and it definitely needs to be uh, decreased with, with the ribbing. So <laughs> it's a bit too wide, but I'm so happy. I'm, I'm in the home stretch, you guys. I have one more sleeve to knit and then the ribbing around the neck opening and then this sweater will be finished and of course it'll be finished before my hub husband's sweater because that's how i operate <laughs> but that's okay so yes this yarn is actually really nice to work with like i said it's 100 percent acrylic so this is yarn b soft and sleek and the colorway is tobacco so it's this really gorgeous um golden coppery color and it's beautiful 
Uh, it is a worsted weight yarn and it is a worsted weight pattern. I'm using US size 6 needles for the stockinette and US size 5 for the ribbing. And again, that's the Brick Pattern by Claire Lee, which is free on Ravelry. So I did do a little bit of spinning since, uh, since last week. So I am spinning some merino fiber on my Turkish drop spindle. And this Turkish drop spindle is from Jerry Brock Woodworks. And the fiber is from Mohair and More out of, is it Waverly, Texas or New Waverly, Texas? I want to say New Waverly, but now I'm going to have to look it up. It is New Waverly, Texas. <laughs> Um, not that I've been to their actual um, physical shop. I've only seen them at uh, DFW Fiberfest, but I would love to see their shop before I move out of Texas. Anyway, uh, so yes, I did a little bit of spinning since last time. So this is how much fiber I have left in my bag. I set a goal for myself to spin up the rest of this by the end of April. And there's a calendar right over there that says there are 30 days in April. So if today's the 18th, then I have 12 more days to get through this fiber. And I, I think I can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'd already spun up, I purchased four ounces of this merino, this is gray merino. And I'd spun up one ounce already. This is the second ounce. So I really want to get this finished so I can start the third ounce. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to show you guys that I did make a little bit of progress. Not that you can really tell. Uh, and I really enjoy spinning with my Turkish drop spindle. So speaking of spinning... <laughs> Before DFW Fiberfest, well before DFW Fiberfest, I did purchase some fiber from a shop on Etsy. And I did not get a chance to show it to you before, so I'd like to show it to you now. So I found this little shop again on Etsy, and this shop is called Must Be Felt. It is a clever name. And uh, it says fine fiber artware. So I purchased two colors <laughs> of some merino top. Merino top. And this is, I've got four ounces of gray and four ounces of teal. And it came in these Ziploc bags with tags on them which is awesome. Now, yes, I know there's glare coming from the lights and you cannot see it super well, but it is a gorgeous teal color. So, this up a little. You can see it's beautiful. So, this is, it says it's 21.5 micron which I know that means something. <laughs> They're both 21.5 micron. Uh, it is very soft and luscious and wonderful. I got four ounces of each color and it was very reasonably priced and there was free shipping in the US which was awesome. <laughs> so if you are a spinner in the US, you should check out Must Be Felt on Etsy. Uh, very reasonably priced, beautiful colors, lots of colors to choose from, um, and fast shipping, no cost on the shipping. It was great. So here's my thought with these two fibers. So I would love to try. So you guys, I love gray. First of all, let's just go out and say that, obviously. So I don't want to just do this again with more gray um, because I'm already doing it. So here's my thought is that this will be another possibly spinning wheel project and I would love to spin these two together 
in a barber pole style. So it'd be the teal and the gray together. I don't know. That's just, that's what I thought when I purchased them. Because I think that would look really cool to have that marled yarn made by me <laughs> from spinning. Uh, and then to make a really pretty shawl out of it. Or not enough for a sweater. So probably, yeah, like a really pretty shawl out of the barber pulled yarn. And maybe what I could do is do, do some of it as a solid teal where I apply the teal on itself and some solid gray where I apply the teal on itself and then do some of it where it's barber pulled and mixed. And so that could add to the shawl design. But that's my thought. So I did get more fiber before DFW um, and I did order it on Etsy from Must Be Felt. She shipped it in these Ziploc bags which I thought was very nice um, and I love that the stickers are right here on the Ziploc so when I go back and look through my stash I can easily find what it is I'm looking for. It's nicely labeled. Um, yeah, really awesome. So I'm excited. I'm excited. But I still need to practice on my practice fiber on my spinning wheel some more. And I have not done that this week, but I want to over this next week because now I'm getting more fiber and I'm planning things. And so I need to get on that and get practicing. And then also on Etsy, I know, before I left for DFW Fiber Fest, I really wanted tags for my knitwear and things that I've been making for family members as gifts and friends and the sweaters that I'm making for us. And I really want to have a nice label to put on the knitwear. My dad wears his sweater a lot when it's colder and people ask him about it. And he says, my daughter knit this for me. And it would be so nice if it had a little tag on it that would indicate this. So, all right. So I ordered from Engrave Me Treasures. And I ordered some leather tags. So... So, uh, the shop has a bunch of samples posted and you can submit your own artwork and whatnot, but I really liked, um, one of the samples. So I asked to have D heart knits put in this little wreath on one side and then <laughs> a D heart on the other. And it's, beautiful. So what'll happen is this will get folded over the edge on the bottom edge of the garment. So I can either have D heart facing out or D heart knits facing out. There you go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And on hats and on whatever. Yep. Oh, I'm super excited. So well done. I chose the dark brown uh, leather as opposed to the light brown. I think there was dark brown, light brown, gray, and something else. But I wanted the dark brown because I really like that color. Um, and it is, it's, oh, it feels so good. So well done. And it was very reasonably priced. I got I don't even know how many of them. <laughs> They're going to last me a while. <laughs> but Engrave Me Treasures on Etsy. Take a look around. They have the fold over the edge. They have, um, you know, the long ones where they've got the four. And you can put the whole message here and just sew it straight on. Um... They have all kinds of different designs, so uh, check them out on Etsy, and 
Uh, it just seems like a really nice way to finish off a handmade item. So I'm really happy about this purchase. And I'm excited that when I, I'm going to go back and put this on um, the sweaters I've already made for Michael and myself. I'm going to put one on my dad's sweater. I'm not going to put them on the socks because they don't need it. They definitely don't need it. Um, but I'll definitely put these on sweaters and hats and possibly shawls. And I think especially if I give it as a gift because it adds that extra personalized touch so that, you know, that person can remember that it came from me. So, yeah. Okay, so for... Um, the non-knitting section of the podcast is going to be pretty light. Um, I have been walking and running on the treadmill a little bit more. I would really like to go for a run outside again. Am I scared of tripping and falling? Absolutely I am. But, I mean, I tripped and fell once out of how many years I've been doing this. <laughs> I don't know why I'm being such a chicken about it, <laughs> but I am. I totally am. Anyway, um, so this weekend, uh, we are having a yard sale at the house, our first yard sale, try to get rid of some things. Uh, we are packing to move to Washington in fall to start. Uh, I have a new job out in Bellevue, Washington near Seattle. So we're sorting through things that we want to keep and things we want to sell. So we're going to have a yard sale this weekend, <laughs> um, our first yard sale to try to purge some of those things. And um, next weekend, is it next weekend? I am running slash crawling in a mud, mud run. Yes, I know. It's not something that I would normally have signed up for. Normally, I would just want to go run a 5k. But <laughs> yes, I'm doing a mud run with one of my new friends that I met at DFW Fiberfest, uh, who's in the Midland Knitting Circle. So I'm going to go do that next weekend on Saturday, which should be interesting. So <laughs> Next time I see you, it will probably be on Thursday again before the mud run. So you won't hear about that, but I am kind of preparing for for this. So I have been walking and running on the treadmill, you know, just staying active. So I don't know what to expect. I have no idea what to expect. I don't know if I'm literally going to have to crawl in the mud or not. So... I'm a little intimidated, to be honest, <laughs> but I also know that it's not going to kill me and I will be fine. So I'm just going to make sure to wear my old running shoes. So if they get covered in mud, it's not a big deal. Um, and some clothes that I don't mind getting muddy because I'm sure they're going to and just go have fun. So... Yeah, it's a, it's a low stakes kind of race because we're participating as a team and only one person in the team has to wear the time chip and that person is not me. So, <laughs> so I can be slow and I can be bad at going over and through obstacles and it'll be fine. <laughs> so it should be interesting. I will be excited to share that experience with you guys after I've had it. Uh, right now, I can tell you pre-race, I'm a little intimidated and a little worried, but I know I'll survive. <laughs> um, yeah, other than that, I don't have anything else planned. Uh, like I said, we're moving this year, which is already a lot. It's already a lot. I mean, look at all of this stuff behind me. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys know how it is. It's a little bit stressful because somehow I have to get all of this stuff into a truck. 
and then we have to drive that truck across the country and then unload the truck. <laughs> also find a place to live. So there is a bit of anxiety, a little bit of stress happening. Um, it's excited stress and excited anxiety, but stress none the least. So um, I'm just really thankful that we have a lot of time to pack and prepare ourselves uh, and we're not having to rush and do it last minute on a whim um, because that sounds really stressful. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I'm um, trying to maintain my craft room as long as possible. I do not want to tear this, this shelving down and put my yarn away until the last possible minute. We'll see how long I can hold out. <laughs> Obviously, I will keep you posted. <laughs> anyway, it has been fun. So thank you for joining me for episode 59. If you haven't already subscribed, you should click that button right down there. Okay. Um, if you were a winner of the Knit Along, again, just shoot me a message and let me know which sock pattern you would like me to gift to you. And that's it, you guys. I'm done rambling, so I will see you in episode 60 next week. Bye!